Hi, everybody. This is Elisa Starr, and I live in Capitol Hill, Seattle, which is the focal point of two of the last protests in Seattle. <clears throat> and I could hear the screams of protesters last night from my apartment. Um, I watched a lot of them walk towards the protest. And I put up my own Black Lives Matter sign and I put next to it a sign that said, be careful, the cops are shooting out eyes because the cops are shooting out eyes of protesters. They're aiming for eyes with their rubber bullets because the rubber bullets, people aren't dying, they're just losing an eye. I didn't realize that was an international trend that um, until I, I started seeing it on Twitter and um, apparently around the world, governments that assault their own people have been shooting out eyes of their protesters. It's a good way to recognize people who have protested in the future, if you think about it. <laughs> see a one-eyed person from now on you're gonna assume that they were in one of these protests or I will so um I just wanted everyone to be really aware of that which is why I put it next to the sign and like I said probably a thousand people streamed streamed past my porch last night and you know I told as many of them to stay safe as I could but dude it super fucks me up to hear the goddamn helicopters all fucking night. That's never happened before in Capitol Hill. That's it. So I had to go inside eventually. I had to, I usually sleep with windows open, but, um, I haven't been able to do it the last couple of nights just because, I mean, Essentially, we're already under martial law, right? When I was a little girl, my father dragged me and my sister and my brother to the Blue Angels Air Show every year. And every year, I would dread it. And I would spend the entire day walking around thinking about how I'd rather be watching TV or reading a book. Because... I love to bury my head in other narratives. And, I mean, six, seven, eight, nine, we win every year. And <laughs> every year, I just would walk around pouting and not paying any attention and trying not to get too sunburned and wondering if all of the men there were as boring as my own father. And apparently, I am the only one who was doing all that because my sister can now identify what kind of aircraft it is by the way it sounds. Um, so she lives two blocks away from me. And in the past, if something was scaring me, if there was like a plane that seemed like it was flying too low or something, I could literally call her and she could tell me what it was. You know, she actually also, I mean, to her credit, used to spend a lot of time at the airfield with my Uncle Jim, who had his own little Cessna, but it still doesn't un explain her uncanny ability. Today, when I was like, oh my God, the cop helicopters were freaking me out last night. She was like, oh, you don't have to worry too much. Those are just the National Guard. Because she knows the difference between cops, news, and National Guard's helicopters. They just sound like they're so fucking low, you know? It already is martial law for the most part. We have a, <clears throat> I think it's a 5 p.m. curfew in Seattle until this Saturday. We've had it for two days. Um, it's really trippy for me because I was talking to Lydia today and she was talking about how a year ago in our podcast, she was predicting that we would become a third world country. She's like, it just happened a little faster than I thought it would. And uh, 
she's right. We were talking about how it just feels like we're trading places with Russia um, in our podcast. And she was like, oh, we have been. We are, we are becoming them. They are becoming us. And it's crazy to me because I've been talking to, I mean, anybody, everybody, right? We're all under this. We've got it. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're basically getting martial law because, because we don't want the cops to kill black people anymore. I don't, right? It's just. It's a fucked up world. It's a fucked up universe right now. And it's like, there's so much stuff happening outside, you know, um, and I am not, I mean, my body isn't functioning super well. So like, I literally like, I, I walked half a block. I limped half a block with one protest um, that was walking past as I was wa- buying some weed, um, this week. And <clears throat> I can't really participate that way. I can, I'm having a hard time with my pain levels leaving the house, but I am trying to lift up as many black voices as I can. If you follow me on Twitter, I'm also trying to lift up as many, um, protester voices as possible too, giving people directions, giving people um, information about how to keep safe, how to make sure that they're not identified by the cops, challenging authorities that um, like our mayor of Seattle, Jenny Durkin, who definitely, I mean, you can see the minute those cops just got tired of waiting and just decided to just turn the hoses on the protesters three blocks from my house last night. It's like 9.30 at night. There had been peaceful protests for five hours before that. Four hours. You know, it was just like, they were just, the cops got tired. And they were like, no, 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 no. We came here to hit. Um, I, so... That's that's what I've been doing is I've been on social media just trying to lift up as many voices as I can of the people who should be leading this fight and the people who hopefully are going to state our demands as a people. <clears throat> if you know me, you know that there are a lot of important black writers to follow that I love following um, and activists who have been fighting all along to create equality to to hold the police accountable and maybe know that white people are joining in the fight i mean white people i've always thought are the ones who can dismantle racism we created it we are the only ones who can take it down and so some of this understanding like watching watching protesters put their bodies on the line for equality, you know, watching the news, having to believe black people. Some of it feels really good, feels a little bit like reckoning, but most of it just feels awful, like any giant change. And I mean, I don't know what kind of country we're going to become now that we're headed towards martial law, now that the National Guard's being called out to everywhere, now that there are curfews in place in every major city in the U.S. because we tried to protest, now that the the fucking president, oh my god, you guys, so much shit has happened. I don't know if you follow this story or not, but because I was on Twitter for the last, I don't know, 12 hours a day for every day for the last three days or whatever, trying to lift up those voices, like I said, I've been getting into a lot of the stories. So I don't know if any of you saw it on alt.net, but a lot of the other major networks are picking it up right now. Um, uh, there was a man named Rahul who became a hero overnight last night because um, when a bunker baby, 
I guess is what we're calling Donald Trump now. That's the whole reason he came outside. It's because everybody's been calling him Bunker Baby. When um, he came out today, um, he, he wanted to get a photo up in front of a church. And so he had his the DC police and I don't know, secret service, maybe just tear gas, all of the peaceful protesters in front of the white house. Um, and, and chase them out of the way so that he could have this photo op. So, um, it was scarier than a lot of other attacks because, because these police these cops chased those protesters there were like a, a couple hundred people in front of the white house yesterday and the cops chased those protesters into a suburban dc neighborhood right um so they chased hundreds of protesters into a suburban neighborhood um they were chasing them and and gassing them um, and, and then apparently a couple of people like saw this horde of protesters running towards them. And I mean, first of all, pandemic. And then second of all, uh, uh, protests and riots and, and everything's kind of closed. So there were, there were people home. This was, oh shit. This was actually nighttime too, wasn't it? This was like, I want to say 9.30 last night, maybe the night before. Um, so they chase hundreds of protesters into this neighborhood and three people, but especially this hot guy named Rahul. I mean, okay, that's that's my bias because I think all guys named Rahul are super hot. That's just a me thing. I am a sucker for uh, a brown men with excessive body hair. That's just like... That's kind of my jam. So, okay. So all Rahul's are hot is what I established. But, okay. So Rahul was the only one who was named. And he ended up, like, seeing everybody running towards his house. And he opened the door and he let a 100 protesters in. He and a couple of his neighbors. And from 930 on that night, the police tried to throw tear gas into his house they rang the bell several times. They try moose. Stop it. Sorry. The cat needs a, a little bit of attention right now. I don't know why. Okay. So, so they, um, the cops kept knocking on the door, telling Rahul that they'd gotten a 911 call. They needed to come in. And he was like, nope, we're fine here. Um, and the news was reporting that he was their hostage. Because that's what the cops were putting out. So Rahul recorded himself on camera with some of the protesters saying, that's not what's happening. You're my friends. We're having a slumber party. You are welcome here. I invited you. So he and his neighbors hid the protesters out until like 6 a.m. And then they were um, allowed to leave. But the cops waited and arrested Anybody they could catch trying to leave that area that night. Anybody who came out on their porch. The cops just waited trying to catch these protesters. Peaceful protesters. The cops chased into a neighborhood. A couple of people let them into their house. Like hundreds of people, right? Dirty, tear gassed, hungry, tired, you know, can you imagine just opening your doors and letting a hundred people share a bathroom with you? Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. It was so amazing and so beautiful and so fucking terrifying that this kind of Anne Frank shit is going down right now. Not just that this kind of Anne Frank, would you hide a protester in your house question on Twitter is going on right now, but also, like, the president ordered the cops to try and beat, gas, hurt, arrest peaceful protesters. And they were so afraid that they hid in strangers' homes. 
I mean, that is a story. When I was a little girl, I used to hear stories like that all the fucking time about Russia. Except, you know, I mean, in Russia, they weren't by the 80s. They weren't protesting. I don't think. I mean, those weren't the kinds of stories we were hearing about. We were hearing about secret Christian meetings that the Russians were trying to have. Because God wasn't allowed in Russia, and so we had to feel really sorry for them because they had to meet secretly in order to pray. And so um, we'd hear about, you know, snitches and codes, and, and it was like being a spy for Jesus was sort of like the propaganda that I used to hear in Sunday school, but I also used to hear about the secret police and uh poisonings and i mean jesus pussy fucking riot has been in prison in russia for the last on and off for the last 15 years because there are ladies who sing songs about not hating themselves you know like russia's police state is real and I've been hearing way before Pussy Riot some boogie stories about it as a Christian, as a child, you know, in Sunday school. And I'm starting to realize that we got certain kinds of propaganda that maybe the rest of secular America wasn't hearing. They weren't hearing all these crazy sort of Nazi, not Nazi, but like sort of Nazi, like Nazi slash Russian slash spy slash Cold War shit, you know, about how, how scary everything was over there. I don't know a lot of other kids who remember all these stories. Anyway, um, I'm not a kid anyway. I, I, I got a little bit lost in this, but it's just trippy to me that like, that's the kind of story I would have heard in 1985 in Sunday school. I don't understand why it's happening now, 2020, in real life. Like, that's just fucking crazy. We really are switching places with them. Lydia and I were fucking right. How unnerving is that shit? Jesus. I don't want to be right about world affairs. That seems like an awful lot of responsibility. I know I'm right about a lot of things, but God. Okay, so... Sorry, I didn't mean to give myself a lot of credit there and get a little bit lost in it. (laughs) Thanks for listening to me spaz out about this and how scary it is. Um, There are a couple of things that I want to let you guys know. Um, Some news that came down today that is super important that I want everybody to be aware of. Um, A ruling came down today that a mandate really that gave the DEA um, the job to investigate people protesting George Floyd's death. DOJ has been ordered to, um, in conjunction, well, a DOJ is overseeing it, and I believe the DEA is carrying it out. They're ordered to con- conduct covert surveillance on all protesters. There's going to be a protest unit of every PD. So... What does that mean? That means that anybody who was outside in these last couple of days, who might have gotten arrested, who might have been in the vicinity of a protest, uh, is going to be investigated. Am I going to be investigated because I I marched for a block and a half and I my Twitter's been lighting up? I don't know. But um, they're allowed to lie and they're going to try to infiltrate our movement or whatever movement comes out of this and now they've got overt mandates about it so it's like their fucking job now before i think i think white supremacists have been infiltrating law enforcement since they started law enforcement i mean i don't know if you know this or not but our police forces were formed um so that they could be slave patrols or slave catchers. That is where all of our cops come from. That that was the first reason why they had to create a police force in the United States. 
all cops are descendants from slave catchers. Um, first of all. But now it's like they're just not hiding it anymore. Some of it makes me feel like it's crazy and some of it makes me feel a little more terrified. All of this, despite the fact that, like, the FBI has said that it didn't find any evidence that Antifa was involved in looting on Sunday. Um, the nation reported that. The fucking FBI. These are the people who have warned Congress over and over and over again that law enforcement has been infiltrated by white supremacists for the last 15, 20 years they've been reporting to Congress. And that white supremacy is... Um, and white supremacist movements are the most active terrorists in the U.S. Homegrown terrorists, white supremacist terrorists, are the most active, most deadly terrorists in the United States. This is something that they reported to Congress. And I remember watching those hearings. The Democrats didn't give a shit. They didn't want to create any kind of like legislation out of it. I think AOC may have tried to drive home a couple points about it, but nobody ever brought up like, oh, okay, should we follow it up? Should we do something about it? And the Republicans wanted to know if Black Lives Matter was a terrorist organization. But the FBI couldn't find any terrorist acts linked to Black Lives Matter. They could find several hundred related to white supremacy. So that's Congress. Those the, the FBI has testified to Congress that Antifa, Black Lives Matter, these are not the problems. They white supremacy is the problem. And white supremacy specifically infiltrating law enforcement is the problem. And when you realize that, you realize why the cops take it so personally when protesters say Black Lives Matter. And when it really just means don't kill us when you kill us it matters that's what black lives matter means and hopefully this whole nation is waking up to that now so i just want you to know they can investigate anyone they can connect to the this week being outside millions of people anyone can be surveyed the national guard is out in most major cities in the united states tonight fascism is here thanks to the justice department i think the thing that's been really hard on me is watching all of these cops assault these protesters and watching them talk about beating up protesters and watching them shoot protesters in the face and <laughs> and watching them do it so happily and i think about how we spend our taxpayer money paying them to do this to us and more than that we spend millions of our taxpayer money dollars every year Paying out the victims of this police violence instead of just firing those cops, instead of putting the bad cops in jail, instead of holding them accountable, instead of addressing the white supremacy and trying to root it out, we just pay to hide it. We as taxpayers spend millions of dollars. See, more, more sirens and the helicopters never stop. So... All of that has been on my mind. It's really hard not to think about all this. It's really hard not to want to get lost in something else because it is 11.44 p.m. It's been three days and the sound of helicopters at night is now constant. And I'm starting to get scared to go out after five What's the point of going out after five? The stores are all closed, you know? And I don't know, like, I don't know what's next. I don't know what kind of 
bad reaction our government is going to have to our demands of quality next. I know we have to stick together. I know that we have to be careful of who we trust in the future. It's going to be a different kind of a world, and I'm really sorry that we're all here. But I really appreciate you listening to me spaz out about this stuff. I wish that I could figure out a pithy greeting card to write. Something funny to say about it. But it's just a fucking bummer. And a trip. It just feels like I'm trapped in Jordan Peele's latest fucking Twilight Zone. This has been Elisa's Thought of the Day. If you want to follow me on Twitter, um, it's at SnarkyCardChick. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook or you can go to elisastar.com and check out any of the older podcasts if you like this Thought of the Day. If you want to look at some of my pithy greeting cards, I swear to God, I'm really fucking funny. All right? I promise. Um, snarkycards.etsy.com is my website for all of the hilarious, brutally honest greeting cards that I make. I swear to God, I'm a really fucking funny person. Oh my God, I've already said that. If you don't, I mean, if you heard this, you probably don't believe me at all. Okay. Um, I hope you're safe. Please be careful. I wasn't kidding. The cops really are taking out fucking eyes right now. Please, please be careful. Wear goggles. And not just because you want to protect your eyes, but also because you don't want them to know who you are out there. You know, protect your identity if you're going to go out. And if you are going to go out, thank you for fighting for us as hard as you can. If you're a writer or an observer, I'm going to try and find you on Twitter and amplify your voice. And I'm going to try and keep us fighting. I hope. I hope that at the end of this fight, when it comes time to clean up and legislate and move forward differently, we can all keep fighting and we can fight for the kind of America we really want to see because we're going to need that fight. I mean, the state of things right now, we're going to have to fight like hell in order to just get it back to where it was a month ago. As far as stability goes. Stay safe. Be careful. I love you. I'm glad you exist.